Hey, and welcome to the Writing Momentum Podcast. I'm Christopher Maselli, and I'm not here with my wife, Gina, today. Instead, I am here with a good friend of mine, Henry McLaughlin. He has been tagged as one to watch by Publishers Weekly, and he's an award-winning author who takes readers on adventures into the hearts and souls of his characters as they battle inner conflicts while seeking to bring restoration and justice in a dark world. Now, he's best known for his Riverbend Saga series, and his new book, Emily's Trials, launches today, November 15th. So you want to get it right now on Amazon. How you doing today, Henry? Hi, Chris. It's good to see you. Hey, I'm so glad to have you on here. It's pretty exciting. You've got a new book coming out like today. You've been going through the whole launch process, I know. And has that, it's got to be exciting because it's been a few years since you've had a brand new shiny book out, right? Yeah. It's been five years, maybe, since the last of the Ben Saga books was published. It was about five years ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's been a journey. Yes. I, for one, am glad that you're putting out another one. And these are Westerns, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But for this podcast, we wanted to just talk with you a little bit about this whole book launch process, because I think this is one of those things that we as authors, we come up with books. And in the olden days, like we just expect the publishers to do our marketing for us and maybe send us on a book tour and get everyone excited about it. And today that is not the way it happens, I know. And uh, I know that you, you actually hired a launch team to help you launch Emily's Trials. And so uh, tell us, why did you opt to hire a launch team rather than, you know, just release it yourself and build up interest over time? I am probably the world's worst marketer. I would, I would <laughs> so probably approach you on, you on the street and say, buy my book, please, you know. <laughs> um, I don't market like most writers. I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm so introverted I won't even talk to myself. So I knew I was going to need help with this, and I had seen um, other author friends use launch teams, and I said that may be the way to go. As I looked into it, I realized that the key piece is, is hiring a good coordinator, a good team manager, so yes. that I didn't have to do the work. Mm -hmm. Of, of recruiting and organizing and, and uh, keeping track of things. So uh, I met with Karen Sargent. We had a really good conversation. I liked her approach. I liked her background. She does a ton of launches. And we just seemed to connect at a level I thought I could work with this person. She explained how, what she would do in terms of both recruiting a team and then managing the actual launch process itself. And it seemed like it would be a good partnership, a good team approach in that she would do most of the work. Really, the nuts and bolts fell okay. to her to do the recruiting, do the screening. I was involved a little bit in the screening. I had veto power over who could be on the team or not be on the team. But she like organized everything down to including giving people graphics they could post. Mm, which mm. I thought was amazing. And she did such a good job on the graphics. I may steal some of them for future book covers. Anyway. <laughs> I was going to say, they're, they're, a lot of them are of your book covers. The one with the gavel, I thought was really great. <laughs> so tell us, for those who are unfamiliar with like how even a book launch works, what is her part of the process? You mentioned that she gathered people, she's screening people. What do you mean by that? What exactly do you see her doing as your coordinator? What did I see her do? She was in touch with me frequently through the whole process and has been through the whole process. I set up the launch team because it had to be in my, under my profile. But once and I enrolled her as the administrator, so she could do everything in terms of sending out posts on Facebook, recruiting people, gathering all their information, gathering what they would do and not do as part of the process, what they could do, and just made me a, a nerd. So she created spreadsheets for me. That, That's that great. Process. Yeah, an overview. Yeah. Who's on the team, their phone numbers, their email addresses, what they committed to doing. And it was just great. And like I said, she said, if there's anybody who signs up that you don't want, just let us know, just let me know and I'll take them <laughs> off. But there was nobody I didn't want. Yeah. Everybody, everything looked really great. So she's been, that's been her role. My role has just been I jump in every once in a while to see who's posting what. I'm going to be doing a Zoom call, probably one next week and one, or maybe one this week now, and next week, because this is already week two of the launch. 
with team members who just want to get together and talk and whatnot. So we'll get that set up. The other thing I'm going to be doing is making sure people who qualify for a prize on the launch team get their prize. Yes. Some of it, some of the prizes are gift cards to Amazon, the signed copies of my first book, mm -hmm. The Journey to Riverbend. And so she's keeping in touch with him, working on an ongoing, but daily basis, actually. She's really good. Really I like that. I, I like how so, so she's creating the social images. She's getting the team together, all that sort of thing. Yeah. But then you're able to go in and interact with everyone. So you really still have control over the process as the author, mm -hmm. but she's helping. She's, she's like your virtual assistant, just helping make everything happen so that, so that right. you know that, okay, this launch is happening and you're not having to do all that work that, uh, that, that, and, that. And so, some of that I imagine would be new to you, like some of the social stuff in that, right? Because yeah, there's so many channels in that it's hard to even keep track of what's going on <laughs> a lot of that anymore. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And obviously with through the launch team process and her knowledge and skill set, she could reach out to more people than I ever could. Yes. So that yeah. was a really good thing. Really. Has, has there been anything so far that you've had to do as part of the launch that your surprised you and you thought, oh, I, I would have never even thought of doing that when launching my book? Oh, several things, I think. One was uh, the idea of prizes for people. So whoever does this first will get a gift card or, or whatever. Yeah. Having that little bit of, of competition that builds excitement and stuff. I would never have thought of doing that on my own. And coming up with the graphics she's come up with and as for people to use on their own posts, that I would never have been able to design those graphics the way she did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I saw that she was, I think she created a hashtag too, for because the book's Emily's Trials and the hashtag is Emily's Trials, right? So that I guess she yeah. can probably track who's posting where and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She's tracking all the statistics. Um, I love statistics, but we have to realize that 73.4% of statistics are made up on the spot. <laughs> She's tracking all of that. So that's good. That, that's great. So how about your publisher? Has your, does your publisher do any part of the marketing process or is that pretty much left up to the author nowadays, which is what I'm hearing mo from more, most now, people is, nowadays, yeah, yeah, everyone expects me to do it. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays it's pretty much left up to the authors. And it was clear from when I signed the contract mm -hmm. that the bulk, the marketing would be left up to me. They did, they got it up on Amazon. They're ready to send it out to brick and mortar stores and other purchase sites, which would have been difficult for me to do on my own, mm -hmm. but their process is they've been very good to work with. Yes. Let me say that. And, but it was clear from the beginning that, and I think that's from what I've seen and talked with other authors is that's pretty much the industry standard now. So. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's really distribution more than anything, right? They, they take exactly. care of the distribution. They make sure it gets out there to the right places. But mm -hmm. if you, if you want, if you want to sell copies of your book, it's got to come back to the author and the tribe you've created and the excitement you've created online and that sort of thing. That's exactly what it is there. They're, they yeah. see their role and I'm fine with it as we distribute the book. Mm -hmm. You promote it. I like that too. It, it, I think that when, when I first felt like I had to do that, it was a little unnerving because you think, oh man, I, I don't know how to do all that. And you're just relying on the publishers to take care of those things. But even when they did do a lot of marketing, I know with some of my early books, they would do marketing, but it wasn't near as much as I expected, right? I was still, yeah. the bulk of it relied upon me. So I think I'd rather have that power to go ahead and do it myself anyway. Yeah. I toyed with Emily's trials, self-publish, and I really was hesitant to self-publish again mm -hmm. because I'm not a good marketer. Uh, I know that that's, that's not a strong point for me. And, but I met at a writer's conference about a year, what's this, 23, May of 22. I met yeah. at, I was at the Blue Ridge Writer's Conference. Yes, I know Blue Ridge. I met with, love that conference. Um, yes. I met with Les Stoby, who was at that time an acquisition editor for Elk Lake. And mm -hmm. I pitched the story to him. And within a couple of weeks, Three weeks, maybe I was just getting an email from the publisher saying, we want you to, we want to sign you to a contract. Mm. Just you on know, the so pitch itself, it? huh? Yeah. Just on the pitch. Yeah. Well, I did send less the manuscript and stuff, and a full book proposal after the conference, but yeah, they liked it. So I said, let's pressure off me in terms of getting everything ready to self-publish. 
it it like we said earlier it take, it handles the distribution issue yes yeah because am i right that your first first book was traditionally published in this series and were the next yeah. two self-published or was just the last one the, two, the next two were self-published and then i was given the rights to the first book oh, they were nice. given back to me by the publisher that's pretty rare that's pretty rights, great including the ebook rights and so that i turned around and new cover and self-published mm-hmm. that too so all three of riverbend is self-published now. good so, for you that's awesome that's awesome okay now you mentioned this emily's trials and then the story the, i think it's got a great hook too you want to share it with everyone what's what is emily's trials about well emily's trials is about a female attorney in the 1880s in kansas and she's a licensed attorney. She's passed the bar and everything else. She's in a practice with her father, but she's never been to court. No, really? <laughs> she's, yeah, she's never had to handle a trial. And she's had to face a lot of prejudice. It's true for wanting to be a lawyer when she should have just gotten married and had kids or become a school teacher or a dressmaker or whatever. She's like totally broken the traditional bonds of what a woman is or is supposed to be mm-hmm. in that time period. And then the first twist in the story is her dad has an accident and he's unable, he's barely able to speak, he's barely able to walk. And so she takes on more and more of the law practice, including agreeing to defend a man accused of murder. Hmm. And she handles herself very well in the trial to spot a lot of despite a lot of obvious bias from the judge and the prosecutor and whatnot, but the, her client is found guilty. And by the time she gets to trial, she believes he's innocent. She wasn't too sure. Mm. But yeah, right. <laughs> then, then she believes she's innocent. So through her, with her dad, they hire a, a bounty hunter to go find who they suspect are the real killers. And the bounty hunter gets back to them and said, I found those two guys, but they were dead. And there's no evidence they robbed a bank. Wow. Or they robbed anybody. So send me the rest of my money. Emily's not too convinced of that. She ends up traveling down to San Antonio, which is the last known place these guys were at, and ends up getting assaulted and threatened. And and there's a threat to her dad. But she makes some good relationships. She makes some good friendships. And she returns back to Kansas and subsequently they learn that the bounty hunter is in Kansas city and he may have more information than he told her. So they go there and there's a big confrontation and that's all in this. Wow. And that's, that's just based on the first twist of the story there. (laughs) It's good stuff. And I think that what I love about it, I, I love the title Emily's trials, because you think that, okay, this is about her just being an attorney and those kinds of trials, but clearly she's having more trials in her life than just, uh, than just those kinds of trials. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, As I was writing it, it was like, Oh, I learned, Oh, her mother left when she was eight years old. Oh, she was angry at God. Oh, Uh the man she's most interested in is just about engaged to another woman and he's a Christian and oh, stuff she goes through in the book. I'm I'm surprised she was still talking to me about it. I love that. Yes, because you because I, I know in in our next uh, podcast when we uh, get together, we're going to talk a little bit about your creative process, and okay. uh, I'm interested to hear whether you're a plotter or a panster, and how you do your research for westerns like this. Okay, you want to get into that now or wait? Till let's the next one? W- let's wait till the next one. For now, where can they get Emily's trials? They can get Emily's trials right now on Amazon mm-hmm. in both print and ebook formats. It's available. I think what I need to encourage people to do is go to their local bookstore. Yes. Ask for Emily's Trials. And then, oh, we don't have it. Order it because I want to buy it. That's the kind of loop or feedback loop that we're looking to build is is build a demand almost one reader at a time, one bookstore at a time. Help them get it in stock. Yeah, help them get it in stock where more people will see it. That's good stuff. All right. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Henry. And uh, always good talking to you. And uh, hey, if you've enjoyed this podcast, would you please rate, review, subscribe, and share it with someone else who might be interested in launching their book and help them see what they can learn from Henry and myself today. 
Until next time, don't forget that together we have writing momentum. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.